four. Item number four is an ordinance adopting amendments to the Center City Housing Incentive Policy, CCHIP, and Inner City Reinvestment Infill Policy, ICRIPT. Okay, uh, Laurie, I know we had an extended uh, presentation yesterday, so if you have an abbreviation, and then we'll get right to um, uh, citizen comment. Great. Item number four is consideration of proposed changes to the inner city reinvestment infill policy and the center city housing incentive policy. The first policy I'll discuss is the inner city reinvestment infill policy. And what we're proposing is that we change the name of this program from the inner city reinvestment infill policy to the city of San Antonio fee waiver program. We will change it from a place-based strategy to a needs-based strategy and only allow projects that meet four categories to be eligible for fee waivers. That would include affordable housing, owner-occupied rehab, historic rehabilitation, business development, and legacy businesses. And as I mentioned, it will no longer be place-based. It will really meet the needs of our community. Additional requirements are that no project that is going to be pursuing a short-term rental permit through a type two permit will not be eligible to receive these fee waivers. The next policy I'll discuss is the Center City Housing Incentive Policy. We are proposing a two-year extension. This is in alignment with the SA Tomorrow Plan, the Mayor's Housing Task Force. It also prioritizes neighborhood preservation and there's a focus on affordability and density. The proposed boundary, we have a three-level system. Level one is the central business district, which is the area in the yellow peach um, boundary. Level two is the area surrounding that central business district, which is pink. And then level three um, includes the 13 regional centers identified in the SA Tomorrow Plan, as well as the transportation corridors that will be identified through the VIA 2040 plan. What we've proposed is first for you to be able to be eligible for these incentives to the C-CHIP is that you must be within a boundary. All projects will be subject to design review. Projects requiring rezoning from single family are not eligible, and this is retroactive to 2016. And level one, you must provide two or more housing units that meet the density requirements. Level two, 10% of your units must be up to 80% or workforce housing, and 10% must be at 60% AMI or below, or you must be above five stories. In level three, 20% of your units must have 60% at 80, um, 60 AMI or below. So that is an actual requirement. The incentives you receive for a level one project is you receive a waiver of your city fees and a SAWS impact fee waiver of up to a million dollars. You receive a 15-year tax rebate for 75% on the ad valorem taxes that the developer pays to the city. We also have a cap for projects that are over $360,000. They will not be eligible for incentives through the As of Right program. This is the maximum allowable amount you can get through an FHA loan. And then projects that are renting for more than 275 a square foot are also not eligible for this incentive. And then finally, in level one, if you do incorporate affordability into your project, you're eligible for an infrastructure grant of $10,000 per unit, um, equal to about 10, um, up to $500,000. Level two, as a reminder, you must have that workforce affordability component or be above five stories. And if you meet one of those two requirements, you receive a waiver of your city fees, a SAWS impact fee waiver of up to a million dollars, I'm sorry, of up to $500,000, a 10-year tax rebate at 75%, and then you're not eligible for the city fee waiver program. And then level three, 20% of your units must be at 60% AMI or below, and you would also be eligible for your city fees to be waived, a SAWS impact fee waiver of $250,000, and then a 10-year tax rebate of 75% of your ad valorem taxes. That concludes our presentation for today. We went over this in, in a lot of detail yesterday during the B session, and I'm happy to address any questions. Thank you very much, Lori. And uh, for the benefit of the folks here today, uh, the City Council has a brief but time certain event. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take all citizen comment. We'll have the brief recess and then we'll come back for council deliberation. 
So I'll begin, uh, I'll call names in order. I'll call the next name on the list if you can prepare uh, to come forward. We'll start with Graciela Sanchez, followed by Yaneth Flores. I haven't started, okay. Buenos dias. Almost a year ago, the city placed a moratorium on seed chip. City staff has spent meeting with some stakeholders, mainly for-profit and non-profit developers. However, they fail to meet with community members who will be most affected by these policies. Ana Sandoval's guiding principal policies, which were supposed to be voted on today, um, but will be voted on next month, uh, are important. And I, I hope that you consider putting forth those policies of public participation today and not wait until they get voted on next week. That doesn't make sense. The process has not been meaningful, ensuring that public input is appropriately considered in the decision-making process. It has not been transparent by communicating the decision-making process to the public, including the role of the public in the process, or providing to you or to us a record of the input received and the range of views and ideas expressed. How many people were actually at these meetings strictly to discuss this policy? We were only invited for the first time last week, and thanks to you, Anna, one of my staff members came. This process has not been respectful, because if it were, then we would have been part of this process a long time ago. Um, and even what we heard last week was, this is what you're going to get, and people challenged that, and it's like, well, too bad, and we didn't see any changes. Process wasn't inclusive, again, I mentioned that, nor accessible. Even the concepts, this, the, technical, the language is so technical and hard for many neighborhood association members to hear. I mean, one of them was there yesterday for the first time in the B session. She didn't even know what she was doing there, and she was afraid to come and speak today or yesterday. And nothing was offered in Spanish, and you had to come to the city staff, and all the meetings were during, this, during the work day, nothing after hours. Um, it wasn't informative enough, it wasn't responsive, and again, not timely. We're, you know, we've been asking for a delay and you all keep on pushing it, so timeliness is really problematic. Um, public input is fair because it allows for participation by those who will be most affected, but public participation will also improve the quality of public policy but because it allows for the full participation uh, an examination and debate of our policies. I think Yaneth is going to give me her time. In absence of full public participation and full examination of this policy, there is no evidence that it will be successful. San Antonio continues to have huge economic disparities, and this policy will aggravate rather than solve these disparities. The city is committing millions and already has committed $100 million to encourage development that will clearly have the effect of displacing poor people and bringing the more affluent into the downtown area. And the justification for this strategy is that it is untested and has dubious merit. This is based on a grand strategy that subsidizing the affluent will trickle down to create jobs for long-term, long-time San Antonio residents but that there is no evidence that it will work. On behalf of low-income residents in San Antonio and in, in the downtown area, and on behalf of the newly formed Mi Barrio No Se Vende Coalition, we have requested and not received answers to the following. What analysis has the city done thus far to determine if CCHIP was or may be an impediment to fair housing? Councilman Saldana's concern about $360,000 home is still not affordable to most folks in San Antonio. And my staff and so many millennials cannot afford $1,375 a month for a 500 square foot efficiency. What analysis has the city done thus far to determine if CCHIP has had any a discriminatory impact on residents of San Antonio? What studies have been conducted to measure the impact of CCHIP on current residents? How have CCDO or other city agencies involved current residents in the development of the revised CCHIP program? And there are more and more and more. Um, 
What are the city's plans to mitigate the effects of displacement of low-income residents and provide funding for relocation of residents who can no longer afford to live in the C-CHIP geographic area? These are the questions that a responsible examination of this proposed policy must ask, and they are the questions that must be answered before the people's monies continue to be spent. Please delay today's vote. Answer the questions we and many others have asked in the last week or so. I believe most of you have not met with many, if any, community residents or organizations regarding this policy. Again, it's so rushed. I know I haven't met with any of you. I also know that at least two members of the mayor's housing task force are not happy with the current CHIP policies being proposed. Stop the vote, bring us into a fully engaged community process, and remember, as we celebrate the 50 years of the civil rights hearings at OLLU, many of us have continued to fight for civil and human rights since the 1968 hearings. I was only eight, but at least for the last 40 years, I have been very engaged on that. And, I, and this CHIP policy challenges the civil rights of our current residents of San Antonio. Do not create policies that continue to not only economically segregate us, but racially and ethnically push the Mexican American and black communities and poor working white people out of the inner city. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Ms. Sanchez. Cynthia Spielman followed by Mark Spielman. M Mr. Spielman, that's you. He's going to see, see my time. Seeing time to Cynthia. If, if okay. I need it, yes. I probably won't okay. need it. Go ahead. Good morning, my name is Cynthia Spielman, and um, I am here just to represent myself this morning, not any association or organization, which probably gives you a clue to what I'm about to say. We have a moment in the city that could have the vision, the leadership, the courage, the imagination and expertise to create a housing policy that would solve the affordable housing shortage and create a vibrant and livable downtown. What happened? Instead, through the C-CHIP recommendations, we find ourselves playing a part in the kind of politics that's been happening all throughout the history of the poor and people of color in this city. You're creating wealth on the backs of our most vulnerable residents. The 68% of affordable housing that exists downtown will no longer be here in five years. The neighborhoods on the west side, the neighborhoods from where my family is from, will no longer house people that live here now in 10 years because of indirect displacement, which make no mistake, is as pernicious as direct displacement. We know this because it's happening in our downtown neighborhoods making the problem of economic segregation even worse. Incentivizing is the new redlining. First you keep them out and then you push them out. Progress San Antonio style. Let me remind you that housing is first and foremost a civil rights issue. You are creating policy that makes the poor pay for their own displacement. And the argument recently that addressing affordable housing on highly valued land is costly and efficient is the kind of economic argument that city officials have always used to justify their actions against their at-risk citizens. You're making the burden on the poor even heavier. And where will they go? The problem with the study that you've commissioned to appease the public is that instead of an assessment of how to prevent displacement, it will be a documentation of yet another instance of displacing the poor because it's in the city's best interests. And for what? What are those interests? It's been claimed in meetings and presentations that it's to house all the new employees coming to USAA and the faculty and students of the expanded UTSA campus, or it's for the new college graduates. <clears throat> Downtown housing in the form of condos will be priced at $360,000. Rentals at $275 a square foot. A thousand foot apartment, two bedrooms will rent for $2,750 a month. Or an 800 square foot, one bedroom for $2,200. What mid-level employee of USAA, of which I think are the majority, could afford that? I have two children with PhDs who are college professors who couldn't afford these prices. And do you honestly think college graduates with their burden of student debt could afford to live downtown? Never mind the teachers, city staff, nurses, artists, chefs, architects, and other working people 
that make our neighborhood so vibrant and that you claim to want to make a, a vibrant downtown for. So who is this for? This is incentives for housing for the wealthy at the expense of the poor using our public dollars to benefit for-profit developers. This is not a good way to create a vibrant downtown or a downtown that most of us envision, and we deserve better from you. And those workers that you claim to be building for, they will be headed to the downtown neighborhoods if they're still affordable, or out to the suburbs because they won't have a choice. And instead of easing the pressure of our inner city neighborhoods and controlling sprawl, you exasperate the problems. And frankly, I'm shocked when we were told yesterday that this policy is the product of, of confidential, months of confidential um, uh, speaking with developers. We have yet to have a full public hearing on this. I keep hearing this is a city by design. I just didn't know it was the for-profit developers who would be doing the designing instead of good public policy that would benefit us all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Spielman. Colin Jones. Mr. Jones will be followed by Dr. Christine Drennan. Uh, excuse me, and with that, Mayor Cosima Colvin, seeds time if I need be. Cosima, okay, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Jones. Okay, with that, uh, Cullen Jones, District 2, uh, Mayor, Council. The City of San Antonio and its incentive program, specifically the, C excuse me, the Center City Housing Incentive Policy, or CCHIP, and the Office of the Assistant City Manager have done a commendable job of incorporating citizens' concerns about neighborhood instability and resident displacement. Within a framework of an incentive program for market rate housing, the CCHIP policy does everything it can to protect residents from direct displacement and pledges to work with the Housing and Neighborhood Services Department on policies that mitigate the effect of displacing residents. However, the policy does not prevent far more destructive indirect displacement. The policy does not address larger concerns people in this city have about a collective vision of housing. Adopting a policy lacking of meaningful public process to determine an overall housing incentive policy for everyone in San Antonio jeopardizes future decisions. Essentially, a broken policy becomes the policy. Citizens' concerns regarding indirect displacement. Incentivized development causes adjacent property values to rise and increase property taxes. Renters, in particular, become vulnerable as rents rise. The cost burden forces homeowners to move. In short, vulnerable residents finance their own displacement. Incentivizing policies like this version of CCHIP makes the burden even hairier for those at risk. This is a broken policy. Some in our communities question the, question the need for incentivizing market rate housing. They argue that San Antonio should subsidize genuinely needed housing, affordable to more San Antonians, not market rate housing. Do we create a policy to produce a, a livable, affordable downtown, or do we incentivize a wealthy elite downtown? Many residents, excuse me, many residents criticize the city of San Antonio's outreach methods as compulsory, superficial, and more of presentations than actual communications. The meetings initiated with varying stakeholders on this particular issue focused on adopting CCHIP, not seeking input. Neighbors charge these meetings as presentations, not conversations, to create change, continuing the call for transparent and inclusive policy and decision-making decision by the city. The San Antonio New Braunfels average median income misleads and illustrates the broken model. The city of San Antonio's AMI is 85% of the regional AMI. Affordable housing intended for those making below the median household income calculated using regional metropolitan statistical area figures, or the MSA, is actually market rate within the city of San Antonio. If we must use MSA figures in the policy, 60% is the upper limit to produce true afford affordability to have a reflected policy. Our request, postpone the current C-CHIP until a completed vulnerability assessment is produced as per the recommendation of the housing policy framework produced by the Mayor's Housing Policy Task Force and the National Association for Latino Community Asset Builders Vulnerability Study, in conjunction with the Neighborhood and Housing Services Department, completes their recommendations on displacement of San Antonio's residents. Let's create a better policy. Tier 1 Neighborhood Coalition Steering Committee, Cosa McAlvin, Christine Drennan, Tony Garcia, Butch Hayes, Cullen Jones, 
Ricky Kushner, Velma Pena, Cynthia Spillman, and Teresa Ibanez. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Christine Drennan. Dr. Drennan will be followed by Warren Wilkinson. Thank you. New York City, Chicago, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland, Boston, New Orleans, Washington, D.C., Austin, Texas. All, until the last 20 years, had functional inner cities that housed the working, middle, and upper classes. I was a graduate student, raising two little kids by myself, living in an east side inner city neighborhood in Austin, Texas. Those two kids grew up to be really interesting adults because they lived in an east side, inner city, mixed up neighborhood in Austin, Texas. Now as a professor with grown kids out of the house, I could not afford to live in that east side neighborhood. Downtowns and inner city neighborhoods across our country have turned into playgrounds for the wealthy. They're not neighborhoods, and is this what we want? There's nothing natural about this situation we find ourselves in. The situation we have of a deteriorated downtown and inner city neighborhoods that lack investment, we created that with years of incentive policy that directed investment to the edges of the city rather than downtown. And then as soon as diseconomies began to appear in the form of sprawl, transportation costs, environmental impact, we realized that that incentive structure had come to an end and we needed a new one, thus the decade of downtown. There is and was nothing natural about that. Because there is and was nothing natural about it, that we created it, then we can guide it and regulate it rather than leaving it up to some mysterious market force. So what do we want? And finally, this ruse about the AMI figures. We all know there's a significant difference if we compare MSA and city median income figures. The median household income of the city, 75% of that of the MSA which means that 80% 80 affordability cutoff is actually higher than the median income level of our families. We all also know that we must use HUD guidelines when calculating affordability structures. So let's be honest and use the 60% rather than the 80%. Let's set aside 30% of units in these new developments for households making less than 60% of HUD AMI, which is our workforce. Is it a bad thing that some of our lowest income families live on our very valuable land? If you use a highest and best use model, it is, but we're a city, not an accounting firm, so we should say more power to them. We know why they're there, because past policy put them there. And now present policy wants that land back, but unfortunately it's occupied, so too bad. Thank you, Dr. Drennan. Warren Wilkinson, followed by Richard Pettis. Good morning, Mayor, uh, Council Members, Manager Scully, Warren Wilkinson, Executive Director of Centro San Antonio. On behalf of our Board of Directors that represent residents, businesses, tourism, property owners, not only downtown but throughout the city, uh, I ask that you approve uh, and support the updates to the CCHIP and the ICRIP programs. These programs encourage development, they address affordable housing, provide consistent and predictable policies regarding available incentives. Uh, they promote uh, historic uh, rehabilitation with appropriate oversight. They help with development of legacy businesses, housing density, small businesses, and they provide for a two-year uh, reevaluation. The previous programs were a success. These changes uh, enhance and clarify the program attributes. I hope you support these uh, policies. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilkinson. Richard Perez, followed by Brad McMurray. Good morning, Mayor, members of the City Council. My name is Richard Perez. I'm the President and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. For 124 years, the Chamber has been an advocate for all of our members and the business community in building and sustaining a diverse and prosperous economy. In my tenure, we have had the opportunity to engage in various strategic plans of the City on behalf of our 2,100 different members. Today, we join in support of the changes to the City of San Antonio fee waiver program and the Center City Housing uh, Incentive Policy. The Chamber believes that responsible economic development is vital to the future growth of our community and well-being of all its citizens. 
The chamber has been uh, active in the affordable housing working group of the mayor's uh, task force on housing and is eager to see some of those recommendations included in the fee waiver programs. We have also been involved in the downtown planning group of SA Tomorrow, focused on development across the entire city. The proposed changes you are voting on today ensure that these master plans are connected, taking into account the work of many citizens and experienced professionals from across the community involved in these projects. On behalf of all of our members, we ask that you vote in support of the proposed changes in front of you today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Brad McMurray, followed by Kristen Davila. Hello, my name is Brad McMurray, and I'm the Vice President of Property Development for Prospera Housing Community Services. We're a local uh, nonprofit housing provider. We're a 501c3, and we were celebrating, fortunately, our 25th year in San Antonio. We have uh, own or administer over 5,000 units throughout Central and South Texas, and we have a, a significant pre presence here in, in San Antonio. We have 16 multifamily developments with over 2,200 units, so I would say that we have a definite interest in San Antonio. I'm here to speak in favor of the fee waiver program, the revised fee waiver program, and the revised C-CHIP program. These programs are not perfect, but they're very, very good. I mean, from my selfish perspective, my passion is affordable housing, and I've heard a lot of passion from the previous speakers. And if you ask me, I'd want to make it all about affordable housing, but I understand that there is economic development that's necessary for a vital city. Now, I haven't put the 10,000 plus hours in economic development that I have in affordable housing, and so I can't really speak on that. I have an opinion, but it's not really a qualified opinion. But I do have a qualified opinion when we regard to affordable housing. And I want to say that in the past, as, as an affordable housing developer, I've been, I work here at Prospera, but I've had previous careers at the San Antonio Housing Authority, Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs, uh, working in East uh, Austin, developing and, and uh, revitalizing housing that led to that economic growth. So I've got a lot of different perspectives that, that help in my opinion. And I just want to applaud the fact that Lori Houston and John Jacks and uh, Veronica Garcia and the rest of the Center City Development Office staff really reached out and asked for the nonprofit affordable housing dividers' opinions. We got to involve in this process. That's not always the case. So I hear what others are saying. But in this particular instance, I would say that they really gave us a seat at the table. I have to, to my, I'm very empathetic of the fact that somebody who has a passion for affordable housing comes in and hears all these acronyms and all these complex things and really can't, prov doesn't understand it. Well, after 20 years, I'm still working on trying to understand it. But the fact of the matter is it's a very complex process. And one of the things that I want to applaud about the fee waiver program is that it does focus on affordable housing. That's a change. It's got dedicated funding for both the SAWS and, and the city fee waiver programs, which is an excellent thing. And as well, it's created a cap on that funding for the SAWS fee waiver so that multiple projects can participate. Now, one of the things it does, too, is it, it uses the HUD income limits. Now, I echo Dr. Drennan's perspective. We do have a difference. Uh, the 60% is probably a better way, but I don't know that it's economically viable for this other economic development at the 60%. That's why I think the two-year period to give it a chance and analyze it is an excellent way to do it. Um, I also applaud the C-CHIP for eliminating the luxury housing. I know through... Oh. Thank I'd, you, Mr. McCurry. I'd just like you all, all right. to support this. Thank you. Kristen Davila, followed by Jack Finger. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, Council. My name is Kristen Davila, and I'm the Vice President and Treasurer of Merced Housing Texas. Merced is a nonprofit affordable housing provider here in San Antonio. Our primary business is to develop affordable housing. We also run an owner-occupied repair program where we've repaired over 630 homes in the city. We own five multifamily communities in the city. I'm here today with my peers from other nonprofit affordable housing organizations to support this ordinance to adopt an, pro, the proposed amendment to the Center City Housing Incentive Program. I want to thank the City of San Antonio staff, and in particular Ms. Houston, Mr. Jackson, Veronica Garcia, for involving us in the process of reviewing this, um, this ordinance 
and this policy. They met with each one of us individually and genuinely heard what we had to say and incorporated our feedback. And in particular, they incorporated our feedback and our recommendation related to using the HUD-defined income limits for program eligibility. So I wanted to say that we, Merced, have been happy to be a part of this process and continue to be happy to participate in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Davila. Jack Finger. Michael Taylor. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Michael Taylor, Habitat for Humanity. Um, last night at the public hearing, I spoke about um, how the city permit fee waivers and the impact fee waivers uh, that we receive through the fee waiver program are really essential um, to Habitat's uh, budget for new houses. I talked about how the fee waiver program is contributing significantly to Habitat's building of new homes, <clears throat> excuse me, that are affordable, <clears throat> sorry, that are affordable for low and very low income families, and how the changes that are, are proposed uh, will help us build even more homes. I mentioned that CCDO staff were very responsive to the feedback from the nonprofits, and I wanted to provide an example. The original policy was based on a yet-to-be-produced, locally-derived income limit standard um, instead of the HUD standard, which our nonprofits pretty much live and die by. Uh, we explained how difficult and expensive it would be for the city to develop its own income limits that are adjusted for family size and corrected um, based on market rents, which is what HUD does. And I also explained, we also explained how difficult and expensive it would be for the nonprofits to comply with two different standards. CCDO heard our concerns and they changed the policy and the income limits uh, to be reflective of, of the HUD income limits. We are supportive of the policy um, and we ask that you approve it today uh, so that we don't have to delay construction of 22, no, 22 new homes for low and very low income families that we're starting uh, in January. Thank you so much and again I would ask for your support. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Bill Schoen. Thank you, Mayor, City Council persons. Um, I spoke last night and shared some opinions, and, and one thing that wasn't able to uh, expand upon because of time limitations, and that is I understand the uh, changes being made in the proposed uh, uh, CHIP program today, understand the reason for them, support them, but I want to share with you an opinion that they may, uh, and this is coming from uh, being in the development world today and seeing land prices climb, seeing construction costs climb, a concern that uh, there may be a chilling effect and uh, the program may be somewhat ineffective in spurring additional uh, housing in the downtown area. And I just want to share uh, an opinion that if that happens, I hope, I know we've talked about a two-year review. I'm, I'm hoping that if, if that occurs, that there may be an opportunity to look at it uh, perhaps annually, um, simply an encouragement. Strongly uh, encourage you to vote in support of, this, of the CHIP program today and uh, uh, look forward to seeing what kind of impact it might have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schoen. That's everyone who signed up to speak. Uh, at this time, the City Council will recess and will reconvene uh, for Council comment and action at approximately 1245.